Hello, Dr. Jenkins here. We are back. Today's live video is going to be going over the muscles of the human. Okay, so you're going to have access to this objective sheet and it lists all the muscles by region that you're responsible for knowing. So I've got the muscle models here and these are the same muscle models that will be included in your lab practical. Let's just jump right in, shall we? We're going to start with the abdomen. Let me put this down just a touch. There we go. We're going to start with the abdominal muscles, okay? And we'll start with our muscle man model. <clears throat> so we can see that for the abdominal muscles, I'm going to give you two tips. The two things to look at to determine which abdominal muscle is which would be the direction of fibers some fibers run vertical, some run, hor run horizontal, some run at an angle. So direction of fibers. And you're also going to be looking at layer. Okay? Let's start with the direction of fibers running vertically. And this is the most superficial layer. So the only abdominal muscle that has fibers that run vertically would be the rectus abdominis, otherwise known as your six-pack muscle. We can also see it on these chest plaques. So here is the rectus abdominis. You're also going to see on your objective sheet the linea alba. That really means white line, but there's a central line of connective tissue called the linea alba, which is between each of the rectus abdominis muscles. On this model, it's more of a white line, right? White line running down the center, linea alba. Okay, now let's next move to fibers that run horizontal. Now, the most superficial muscle that has fibers that run horizontal is the external oblique. These fibers run down and in, external oblique, outermost layer, fibers run down and in. But instead of, instead of remembering down and in, up and out, the way that I remember external oblique is that the fibers run almost like you had your hands in your pocket, right? My pocket's down here so you can't see it, but if I had my hands in my, my jeans pocket, for example, my fingers would approximate the direction of the external oblique. So think about external oblique on the side, fibers run down and in like hands in your pocket. And we can see the external oblique on the muscle man on the side. We can also see the external oblique on this plaque on this side because the fibers are running down and in. This side is showing us something else because the fibers, can you tell? The fibers are running horizontal, so that's not the external oblique. They're showing us a different layer. But on this side, the fibers are running down and in like it was hands in your pocket, so it's going to be external oblique. And on this plaque, we can see the rectus abdominis, linea alba. And on this side, we can see the external oblique because the fibers are running down and in like hands in your pocket. Now, if we peel back the external oblique, we're going to see the internal oblique. The internal oblique is shown on this side. So the internal oblique is underneath the external. And remember, the external had fibers that ran down and in, like hands in your pocket, which means that the internal oblique has muscles that run perpendicular to that. So on the side, my external oblique, like my hands in my pocket, outermost layer, if we peel back the external oblique, then you're going to see the internal oblique, and its fibers run the opposite of the external oblique. So we can see all of them on this plaque, okay? Rectus abdominis, linea alba. Here we're seeing external oblique, and I know it's that because fibers are going down and in like hands in my pocket. And I can just presume that this is the internal oblique. So they've peeled back the external oblique, and instead of the fibers running down and in, like the external oblique, they're running the opposite direction, internal oblique. The deepest layer is called the transverse abdominis. So if we do it layer by layer on the side, 
external oblique, outermost layer, hands in the pocket. We peel that off, we have internal oblique, next layer down, fibers run opposite of the external oblique. And if we peel that off, we're going to see the deepest muscle, which is the transverse abdominis. These are the only abdominal muscles that have the fibers that run horizontally. So transverse abdominis is the deepest abdominal muscle, and the fibers run horizontally. Cool. For the neck muscles, we can see the sternocleidomastoid. What's cool about this one is it is named based on the bones that it runs from. It goes from the sternum and clavicle up to the mastoid process of the temporal bone, which we know what that is, right? That's when you can feel. When you turn your neck to the side, you can't see it because I'm wearing a turtleneck. When you turn your head to the side, you will see the sternocleidomastoid. Come a little closer here. This one right here. Okay? Good. Let's talk about the chest muscles. And remember, we're only talking about the human muscles right now. On the chest, we have the pectoralis major. This is your chest muscle, commonly referred to as your pec. But of course, I'm going to want you to say the whole muscle name, pectoralis major. We can see the pectoralis major on these models. So on this side, they've kept the pectoralis major. Now, if we peel back the pectoralis major, we can see a much smaller muscle called the pectoralis minor. So it's deep. Superficially, we have the pectoralis major, big and broad chest muscle. If you peel back the pectoralis major, we can see a much smaller muscle called the pectoralis minor. Good. Now we have one called the serratus anterior. So get your bearings here. We've already gone through the abdominal muscles. So we know that, for example, this here we know to be the external oblique. If I come a little bit higher up towards the armpit, these collection, this collection of muscle right here is called the serratus anterior. It's very prominent in boxers because actually it is the muscle that does scapular protraction. But I want you to be clear because some people confuse it with the external oblique. They do, in fact, weave together. If we're talking lower in the abdomen, external oblique. If we're a little bit higher towards the armpit or the axillary region, serratus anterior. All right. That takes care of that. Let's flip over to the thigh off the stand. The thigh is going to be probably the hardest area just because there are so many muscles and that's why on your sheet you'll see that they're separated and we're going to start with the anterior thigh. Go on the screen here. So we'll see the anterior thigh, then we're going to go over the posterior thigh, then we're going to go through the medial thigh. Where's the medial thigh? Right there, medial thigh. So there's so much going on in our thigh, we do it by region. Let's start with the anterior thigh. Oh, and that one's missing a muscle. I'm gonna have to go grab another one. Hold that thought. A dramatic pause, wasn't it? So I'm going to go over most of the thigh muscles on this big leg muscle. We can see some of them on the muscle man, but I'm going to spend most of my time over the big leg, but you'll look over this also. Let's talk about the anterior thigh. The anterior thigh has a big muscle group called the quadriceps. So indeed, on your sheet there, under anterior thigh, the first four that are listed 
collectively make up the quadriceps. You should know that. So we have the vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, rectus femoris, and vastus lateralis. Those four together are called the quadriceps. Let's talk about them. So on this model, look where my hands are. The muscle in the middle is called the rectus femoris. Now be careful because we talked about the rectus abdominis as being one of the abdominal muscles. So make sure that you learn the words carefully, rectus femoris. And of course, the fact that it says femoris tells us that it's by the femur. So the rectus femoris is the middle quad muscle. Surrounding the rectus femoris, we have the vastus medialis and the vastus lateralis. This is medial, so it's vastus medialis. I can tell because of the foot. This is the medial side of the foot. Vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, because it's the outside of the foot. Some people can get help with memorizing this by visualizing it as a hot dog in a bun. So the, the hot dog would actually be the rectus femoris, and the two sides of the bun would be the vastus medialis and vastus lateralis. The last quadricep muscle is underneath the rectus femoris. So if on the muscle practical, the rectus femoris has been taken out, and I'm asking you the muscle underneath, you know it's going to be the vastus intermedius. Okay? So, four muscles of the quad. Rectus femoris is the hot dog. The buns, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis. Underneath the rectus femoris is the vastus intermedius. Now, also in and around the anterior thigh, we have a muscle called the sartorius. This muscle actually originates on the ASIS, which we learned on the pelvis, and it's thin and it runs over top of the quadriceps down to the medial side of the knee. The sartorius is the longest muscle in the body, thin and narrow over top of the quadriceps, sartorius. There's a tiny little muscle above the quads called the tensor fascia lata. It's small, it's on the lateral side, right? So here's my rectus femoris, my vastus lateralis, but a little bit higher up towards the hip is a smaller muscle called the tensor fascia lata. We can see almost all of these muscles on our muscle man. So let's look at this thigh. We have the rectus femoris, hot dog, and then the buns would be the um, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, we can see the sartorius, thin muscle running over top, sartorius. And then we can see the tensor fascia lata, tiny muscle closer to the hip above the quads. Good. Now let's switch to the posterior thigh. So instead of being the anterior thigh where our quadriceps are, we're going to switch over to the posterior thigh. The posterior thigh is made up of a muscle group called the hamstrings. On your objective sheet, you're going to see three muscles listed under posterior thigh. Semimembranosus, semitendinosus, and biceps femoris. Boom! Posterior thigh. Easiest place to start would be to look at the lateral side. The lateral hamstring muscle is called the biceps femoris lateral hamstring muscle, and I know it's lateral because it's the same side as the outside of the foot, lateral hamstring muscle is called the biceps femoris. And of course, you're going to have to be careful because we have a biceps brachii. I mean, I don't want to show off here, but biceps brachii is up here. Biceps just tells us that it's a muscle that has two heads. The brachii tells us it's in the arm, whereas the biceps femoris tells us it's by the femur. So if the biceps femoris is the lateral hamstring muscle, that means the other two muscles are considered on the medial side. And these are our two semi-muscles, semi-membranosus, semi-tendinosus. The one that's on top 
I think about semitendinosus, T for top. The one on top is the semitendinosus. The one underneath that is called the semimembranosus. So together, the lateral posterior thigh muscle, the lateral hamstring muscle is called the semitendinosus and semimembranosus. But when we separate them, the muscle that's on top is called the semitendinosus. Then the muscle underneath that is called the semimembranosus. You can see these on the muscle man. Okay? So if we look at the lateral hamstring muscle, biceps femoris, and we can see two muscles on the medial side. The one on top is the semitendinosus, and the one underneath it is the semimembranosus. Now, last, we have the medial thigh. So it's not the front, it's not the back, back here, it's the medial thigh. These are known collectively as the groin muscle. You know, your groin, your adductors, sort of the inside of your thigh. Now, there's a superficial muscle, so we're on the medial thigh. There's a superficial muscle that runs straight up and down. And that muscle that runs straight up and down is called the gracilis. The way that I think about this is it almost, I almost imagine it like the inside seam of my pants. So if I'm wearing jeans, that inside seam that runs right along me, your medial thigh and it runs straight up and down, that muscle that's underneath it would be the gracilis. Gracilis. Now, the adductor muscles underneath that, so the gracilis is on top, but underneath it we have some of the groin muscles. The highest one, this little teeny tiny thing, so right where I'm pointing to, it's right between the blood vessels and this muscle, that teeny tiny one is called the pectineus. It's tiny. We can only see a part of it here. Some people remember this because it's near the PP in males. Pectineus. Pectineus. The next one down is the adductor longus. It gets its name adductor longus because it is a long muscle. Straight and long. It's not quite the gracilis, which again is more superficial and it runs straight up and down right on the inside. But now I'm a little bit higher. The tallest one is the pectineus. Next one down is the adductor longus. And then the one underneath it all, which actually has two parts. So both of my fingers are on the same muscle called the adductor magnus. Adductor magnus. So we have the pectineus, teeny tiny one right there, adductor longus, adductor magnus. Collectively, these are known as the adductors, and they're called the adductors because the action that they perform is hip adduction, which is to bring the leg back in towards your body. We do have an adductor brevis, but you cannot see it on these models. So you will not be asked to label the adductor brevis. However, I could ask you to list, I could ask you to list the three adductor muscles in the human. So you would say adductor brevis, adductor longus, adductor magnus. We can see some of these on our muscle man. So if you look at the medial thigh, the one running straight up and down here is called the gracilis. The pectineus is right here, pectineus. Adductor longus. And then adductor magnus would be the muscle underneath there. Good. That's the hardest part. So on the cat also. So I really recommend you spending a lot of time on the thigh. And it really helps just to get your bearings. So if you memorize the muscles, then you can just ask yourself, where am I? Am I, am I on the anterior side, the front? Then I'm going to automatically think quadriceps. Am I on the posterior side, on the back? I'm going to automatically index to hamstrings. Or 
am I on the medial side, the meat of the inner thigh, then I'm going to be thinking adductors and pectineus. Oh, okay. Now, of course, we have the gluteus maximus. This is the butt muscle. No one should miss gluteus maximus. If you see the gluteus maximus taken away, one of the muscles underneath is the gluteus medius. We also have a gluteus minimus. It's just not on your sheet, so you don't need to know it. So if I'm asking you the outer glute muscle, gluteus maximus, if this is taken away, gluteus medius. Excellent, my friends. How about the lower leg? Let's talk about the lower leg. So on the anterior side, we have a muscle called the tibialis anterior. It's by the tibia. And it's on the anterior side, so it makes sense. This is the muscle that is right beside your shin. Like you get shin splints, it's oftentimes this muscle that is being affected or damaged. Tibialis anterior. On the anterior side, right by the tibia. On the posterior side, we of course have our calf muscles. But that's not going to be good enough for you to say, no, no, no. The outer calf muscle that we think of as the calf muscle that has two heads is called the gastrocnemius. Gastrocnemius. There is a muscle underneath the gastroc. You know, the gastrocnemius gets all the credit because you can see it. But there is a pretty big muscle underneath it. So you can see on the side here, running the whole length underneath the gastroc, is a muscle called the soleus. You can see it on both sides. I can also take one of the heads of the gastrocnemius out. I can get it out. And that big muscle underneath is the soleus. So gastrocnemius is more superficial, it has two heads. Underneath the gastrocnemius is the soleus. Excellent. Let's get to the arm. We'll do the back last. Let's talk about the arm. With these models, it's kind of easy to get disoriented. So what I sometimes like to do is, if I'm in the lab particularly, I like to pick it up and imagine which side it is. This is the front of the scapula. This is the back. Um, so this would be a left arm. First of all, we have the muscle that covers the shoulder called the deltoid. So if you're touching, if you're touching your shoulder, you're touching the deltoid. And remember, we did have a bump in the mid humerus called the deltoid tuberosity. Guess what? That's where the deltoid attaches. Deltoid. On the anterior side of the arm, we have the biceps brachii. You're going to want to say biceps brachii by the arm brachial versus the biceps femoris, which was the lateral hamstring muscle. You know, the biceps brachii gets all the credit, but underneath it is a pretty meaty muscle called the brachialis. Okay, so the biceps brachii, I think we all know what that muscle is on the anterior, has two heads, biceps brachii, but underneath it is a muscle called the brachialis. It's just as big, actually. It's just not as prominent to see from the outside. On the posterior side of the arm, we have the triceps brachii. Make sure I get this right here. Where my fingers are is the triceps brachii, and it has three heads. One, two, three. And you're going to need to know the three different heads. So you should know, first of all, this muscle on the posterior arm is the triceps brachii. Its heads are lateral head, because it's lateral, closer to the deltoid, lateral head. The long head of the triceps brachii goes up towards the armpit. And then the medial head is just teeny tiny. You can see a little separation there, medial head. So collectively, triceps brachii, lateral head by the deltoid, long head up towards the armpit, and medial head is the smallest one, and it's on the medial side. Cool. 
Let's look at our big back muscles. The trapezius is the bigger upper back muscle. It's kind of a diamond shape, trapezius. The lower back muscle is called the latissimus dorsi. That's a tough one for spelling. Just going to have to practice. Latissimus dorsi. So we have trapezius, upper back muscle, latissimus dorsi, lower back muscle. And you can cross off levator scapulae. There's one model in the lab where we can see it, but it's really hard to show you through a video. So in this instance, you do not have to know levator scapulae. All right, folks, study, study, study. Look at the pictures online. I know you can do it. Good luck.